Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. My partner, John Coleman, and I have the great pleasure of speaking with John Mariani of the Virtual Gourmet. How are you doing, John and John? <laughs> Very well. Spring has sprung back here in the east. It's uh, going to be 72 tomorrow and uh, no more masks here in New York. So everything's pretty good. Oh, wow. yeah. And you're, that's why you're smiling. That's why I'm smiling. Hey, John, um, I am a big fan of your newsletter, The Virtual Gourmet, free, by the way, at johnmariani.com for anybody who's interested in food or travel uh, and good writing, I might add. But um, besides being a fan of your food and travel writing, I am a fan of your novels. You've written over 12 books, uh, but they're not all food oriented. You've got, what, three or four novels and you're sharing now, on your virtual gourmet, you're serializing, I think is the right word, a third novel. This is a third novel you've done shared with your readers. This is great. I love it. Tell us about it. Well, it's, this is, um, there is a lot of food in this one, as there are in all my novels, but it's not a food novel. But you will also travel in, in this particular one. It's called Another Vermeer, and it refers to Jan Vermeer who was the great 17th century uh, Dutch artist, um, contemporary with Rembrandt, but not nearly as well known in his time. And for, as a matter of fact, about 150 years or more, nobody thought that Vermeer was all that terrific, but um, now he is considered one of the greatest of all artists. And there's only 35 paintings of Vermeer in the whole world. And a couple of them are hidden from view. Um, because they're in private collections. Uh, one was was bought by a Japanese billionaire named uh, Saito, who was arrested and sent to jail, and he bought it for about $85 million, and then wow. said, uh, I'm going to burn it. Nobody will ever see this again, and nobody has ever seen it again. Wow. So <clears throat> the title of my novel, which is the second in the series of crime novels starring, starring my protagonist, uh, Katie and David. Uh, Katie is a reporter for a national magazine called McClure's, and uh, David is an ex-cop from the New York City Police Department, and they work together on Capone's Gold, which was my first novel, um, which was also serialized. So this one is called Another Vermeer, and it doesn't refer necessarily, I don't want to give away all the beans, to that missing Vermeer that I just mentioned that Mr. Saito went to his grave possessing. It might, it might, uh, uh, it might apply to uh, Vermeer that was actually stolen from the uh, Isabella Gardner Museum in Boston two decades ago, uh, which has never been recovered. So that's out of commission. So there's really only like 31, 32 Vermeers in the whole world. You can see a couple of them in, in uh, Holland, uh, in the Netherlands. You can see, uh, I think the um, Frick in New York has one. The Metropolitan Museum has two. I mean, they're that rare. So because there are hundreds of Rembrandts, I mean, just hundreds of them. So uh, consequently, it went with, with Rembrandt selling for 80, 90, 100 million dollars, what would a new Vermeer sell for at auction if it mm. in the year this this is happening in the year 2001 or so 2001 2002 and it comes to auction and everybody in the art community is saying if this is a real new vermeer in good condition this thing is going to go for a hundred million dollars which would be the highest price ever paid for a painting um since then i should say that uh Andy Warhol is going for $100 million, which shows how out of kilter we are in <laughs> of, uh, art auction these days. But um, yeah, if there was another Vermeer to come on, they're talking $100 million. Yeah. So who would bid on this? And why is this a crime novel? Well, as of the, uh, I think we're up to the 12th chapter, um, my two characters are investigating, investigating. There's no crime that's been committed, but just the painting hasn't even come on the market. But they're trying to figure out who might buy it and what is the, they, they learned that the art market, the art auction dealership market can be pretty dirty because of the money involved. And when you're talking about $100 million, yeah. the auction house is going to get 15% of that right off the yeah. top. So that's Sotheby's or Christie's or something. So that's a pretty hefty sum. 
Um, beyond that, who can afford that? Well, $100 million, the last big, big um, auction piece that the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York bought, and you think they would have all the money in the world, <clears throat> was for $45 million for a Duccio several years ago. And they had to go out and scour their philanthropists in New York and say, please, please give us the money to buy. This is a very rare Duccio. That was only 45 million clams. This one's going for 100 million. Mm -hmm. So who can afford to buy that? Well, there's six or seven people as a detail in the novel who it might be. And again, they're not culprits, they're not doing anything wrong. But so there's a Russian billionaire who are much in the news these days and they collect fine art. There are a couple of guys in Las Vegas who have lots of money and have their own art collection, one of whom is Steve Wynn, who actually did open a museum in Las Vegas with his collection, and he's after a, after a Vermeer, right. uh, which he did own and then later sold. Um, that's a stark situation. But everything in my, my novels are is historically absolutely true except for what isn't. <laughs> but I mean, if I tell you that the walls in this Las Vegas casino were painted blue, I can guarantee you they are. And <laughs> if I say that this place was at this address at this time, it really, really is and really happened. If I say this <laughs> is what the boats out of Hong Kong Harbor looked like, you know, I looked into that too. Right. John, so, John, I, I want to interrupt for a second because I, I have read it with great interest. Uh, it has the usual suspects. It has... Uh, uh, it's wonderful that uh, because you're so uh, uh, white, white traveled and uh, interest far beyond uh, just uh, uh, culinary, is that um, uh, to have a uh, a, a uh, stripped from the headlines and so many things that are are well we sort of know about because we read about in the real life. It really feels as if it's almost real time. Uh, and uh, John and I have had the great pleasure of uh, interviewing several times a, a New York Times bestseller uh, mystery writer with about 70 books, uh, J.A. Jantz. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm getting the same sense of, of excitement and, and reading through them, except yours are we I, her books I have in my hand. I can just get through them. Yours, I have to wait a week uh, to find out where the next shoe yeah. drops. But I do, I do want to add one additional thing. Uh, great pleasure that Jance, Jay Jance, shared with us. She says, one of the things about being a writer is you get to have uh, a poetic license. And uh, uh, she's named um, a certain of her villains after former teachers who said she'd never make it uh, and things like that. But you have an interesting ripped from the headlines uh, character called John Coleman. <laughs> and I, I wonder... Okay, is that based on Where did anybody? He come from? Where did he come? But but even more than that, okay, the fact that uh, John's name is in there, the fact that you referenced me, uh, it really to my heart, because you named John Coleman as being what the editor of Art Today. Yes. So so the fact that you got us both in there, even if it's not true, I'm holding on to the fact that you've honored me as well. <laughs> In fact, uh, it, 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 there's two reasons. Number one, it's fun. And if you go through any and all of my novels, uh, almost my entire high school class is in there uh, by one name or another. Some are criminals, some are nasty people, some are this is, uh, whatever. And then the second reason is that when I, at least as a fiction author, cast about for names, none of them sounds, they always sound contrived. Let's see, I'll call him... Alphonse du jour. No, that's uh, Marie Antoinette uh, Sokersky. That nobody has a name like that. There are there are a lot of guys named John Coleman and Art Kirsch in the world. They just sound like real names, and that's why I use them. Anyway, <laughs> it was it was it's, it is a a wonderful read, and if you like anybody who likes a a, a mystery, um, this is this is it in spades. And uh, the beauty part, again, is that uh, you can't binge read it. Uh, you have to, uh, well, you can. I, I, I've been read about the first 11 and 12, and I've kept up with them now. Uh, but uh, it's nice to be able to take a break and wonder what's coming up next. <clears throat> well, I like, um, as any good mystery writer knows, um, you have to have cliffhangers. 
<clears throat> James Patterson, excuse me, <clears throat> James Patterson <clears throat> is the wealthiest, best-selling author on the face of the earth, and he does writes all mysteries, some of which he doesn't write, he has ghost writing. Mm -hmm. But his method operandus is that every three page, every chapter is three pages long or less. And every chapter ends with the door opened and what he saw coming through it, you he wouldn't want to believe. Or and she opened the letter and gasped. Um <laughs> cliffhangers have always been great. And they make you turn the page. And I'm not, I hope as simplistic as uh, James Patterson always is. Um, but uh, I always try to leave just a little bit so you can't wait until next week to see if Flash Gordon actually got destroyed on the planet Mongo. Well, there, I have to say there, uh, your, the novels that you've serialized are a lot of fun uh, mm -hmm. to read, and this is no different. Thank the, you. what is it? The, and uh, not the last Vermeer, another Vermeer. Yeah. yeah. Another. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.